hello it's Sarah and today I'm going to be painting and we're going to do this little Halloween project and I found this at Artist Club and I did a similar thing last year where I sent you to a website so I'll put it in the description box Artist Club and they have free um, patterns for you to download and then I'm going to take you through the process so uh, I chose this one because it's super simple. There's not a lot of technique in it. It's just painting, but it's still such a cute little project. So all I'm going to have you do is I'm going to put it in the um, description box. Go to artistclub.com. And then you'll see up at the top here, let me try to zoom in a little bit. It says freebies. So you click on freebies and go to free patterns. And then up will come all the different free patterns that they have. I'm going to go to show all because I'm not exactly sure where this one is. This one I downloaded too. This little Deb's Angels, I'm going to be doing that like next painting session that I do. So, uh, but let's see where this pumpkin one is. This one's by Lori Spels and she's uh, been in the business a long time. And now I think she works a lot with uh, stencils. So those of you who like stenciling and quick and easy projects, Lori's your girl. So uh, I'm going to make you crazy if I just keep doing that. But I'm just, you know, I should just go to, I'll go to the one, because since it's right in the beginning, I'll do the angels one. Because we're going to, I'm going to do this one with you guys too. I have it. So you click on the project that you like, and it comes up. And you can actually click here, it says more images, and it shows you clearer pictures of the project, so you get to see that. And then, uh, oh, yo, 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 all right, go away. Then it'll say free download. So you go to free download, or I have, um, oh, here it is, free instructions, sorry. <laughs> So this is actually the whole pattern and I found out like there's a lot of pictures in these patterns so if you don't want to print out all the pictures like I think one picture is plenty for you to have a reference but you're pr you're gonna use up all your ink on your computer if you keep if you print every page with every picture so I mean I think they're really really good to have when you're um, painting and you have a reference but you get all these step-by-step -step directions. And I know this one had particularly had several uh, color images that you don't need. So after you do that, so you print out your pictures, you print out your pattern, and this is what you'll have. So for this one, we have the Halloween. And I think, let's see if I printed everything out too. I think I, three, three four, yeah, I did print out the whole thing. And what you get is a list of paint colors that she uses and these happen to be deco art paints by Americana and I know they're very popular right now the deco art paints but I am using what I have and I had pretty much all these paints so let's see avocado I have deco art Americana and you can tell how old my bottle is um, burnt umber I have and it doesn't even have a Thing on it anymore but I have it so you're gonna go through and see what colors you need now that being said I've painted for years and I have paints so if you have another brand or I mean look at this it's orange and green guys it's not like you don't have to even if you have a uh, heavy body paint or whatever you have in orange and green you can thin it down with mediums and stuff like that so don't get crazy going out and buying every color paint the next thing is it has the surface standing ornaments now I'm lucky enough that I have my hubby and now I have Mickey to cut me wood if I want it but the surface is available through artist club so you can just go on the website and order the actual surfaces if you want them or if you have a handy hubby you can just trace the pattern out and cut it out of a piece of pine wood or something okay so or what I'm going to even suggest is just do it on a piece of watercolor paper or in your art journal 
just so that you can play along and you don't have to worry about whether it's perfect or not and it's going to be a display piece or something. The next thing she has here is the um, brushes that she uses, which I love this, and I actually just placed an order for the Papillion brushes. Now these are what they use, and I want to see what the quality is of the brushes because I have, I've been using the same brush, and I mean you can see how crusty this is. For a long time it's all chewed up, but I still haven't found anything that I, that feels as good in my hand or that I like as much. So I wanted to try some of these. So I ordered a few. Um, Lori definitely, see she has the Lori Spelt stencil brush. Because I told you she works with stencils a lot. Um, and then you get into the preparation of the piece and the painting instructions, which is awesome. So I'm going to go ahead and start with you guys right now. Um, so you can go to the website, get your pattern, get a surface, and here we go. So like I said, my husband has uh, cut me this piece of wood. And I'm just going to read what Lori has for prep. Sand and seal the pieces with DecoArt Multi-Purpose Sealer. Sand again when dry and wipe away sanding dust with a damp cloth, okay? So I've shared that I use the Joe Sonia All-Purpose Sealer. And I think DecoArt's doing a great job because... They're making everything available right at this website, so you can get it there. But they probably sell an all-purpose sealer at Michael's. I'm not sure. I've had this forever. This is like, how many ounces is this, right? 16.9. It's a lot of sealer in here. So I'm not, I bought that probably, I don't know, I think I might have gotten this all on. Anyway, so what I like to do, and Lori just wants you to seal it first with this by itself. I actually mix it with um, some paint just to get that base color on there and get started. So basically, I take a little bit of the all-purpose sealer, which I have already done here, but I take a little bit of that and a little bit, and I'm gonna use pumpkin, and I shake it first because it all separates in the bottle. You wanna make sure you've got it all together and put about the same amount, and there seems to be a blockage. Oh, it came, there we go. And then I just brush mix it like this. And now I have sealer and paint, and then I go to the piece. Now, that's just the way I learned to do it, and it may not be scientifically correct. I don't know. But I like it because when I sand it, I have a little, I have the paint in the wood, and I'll show you that. So look, I'm just, this is a really dingy brush, dingy, I don't know. It's used, well, well loved brush, we'll say. And I'm not doing anything fancy. I am, I'm fast. I'm a very fast painter. I like to get it on there. And I'm, I'm actually putting it on the sides. But what's great about this shape is there's a pattern for the other side. See how it looks like a Christmas ornament too. So you could do a snowman on the other side. So I'm not worrying about the back right now, and we'll. I'll see if I'm going to do, I'll probably do that one too. I'll do the Christmas ornament one closer to Christmas time. So you're just going to get that covered. And then I like to go back and just get all the um, lumps and bumps off so that it's smooth. Because I'm going to come back and sand it. I'm going to set that aside to dry. And when it's dry which I have one because I have all three of them. This is what you're going to have. Now, you can't see, and if you had feel-a-vision, you would be able to see or feel it. But I'm going to try and come in. What happens is, and here's the thing, I never sanded this to begin with. I like to start with the raw wood, unless it's really really chewed up the wood and you really need to sand it first I like to have um, I like to just do my I don't like sanding is what I'm trying to say so I try to keep it to a minimum so now if you could feel this it's all the nap of the wood the paint makes it kind of stand up so you have all this little rough edges right so then I'm gonna take this is just a fine I think sandpaper this is actually wet dry because when I was doing um, resin. I had a bunch of this. P400. I don't know. It's fine. 
and I would go over the trash can or I would go out on the front porch and I would sand this down to where it's smooth. Now don't knock yourself out. Don't go crazy. It's This is a cutesy little piece, right? So let me zoom back out again. Well, wait a minute. I want to show you. And then what you end up with is this. So I've already sanded this one. And you can see where I've taken it off some places. Some places there's no color. But that's okay. Because we're going to come back and add a coat of paint um, and cover that up. But now I have the paint color is actually sanded into the wood, which I feel like that's what happens to it. And this is super smooth. I've sanded it. Now the edges aren't as smooth and they don't have to be. Like I said, there's, it's pretty smooth though. All right, so now this is ready to go. Actually not, it's ready to be painted for my um, final, uh, when I'm gonna trace the pattern on. So I'm going to read to you what Lori has you doing next, and then I'm going to do what I would do. It says, painting instructions. Pumpkins. Base the pumpkins with canyon orange. Base the top part of the pumpkin again with orange twist and blend with the middle section. The middle section remains orange canyon, canyon orange. Base the bottom of the pumpkins again with burnt orange and blend toward the middle section. And then it says, shade the pumpkins and add sections with burnt umber. So I'm going to show you how we're going to do that. Now I've done this in the past with um, sky. Like when I, at, when I just do wet on wet, I want to do the wet on wet. So what, it's basically it's what she said. You're just going to, while this is wet, and I'm just going to put this out of the way so I can, I'm going to get tangerine and then burnt orange. So I have these three colors of orange. This one's the middle color. This one I'm going to keep at the top of the pumpkin, and this one's going to go at the bottom. So I'm going to put all three of these colors out on my palette. And I like to use palette paper, but you can use a paper um, plate. And let's see, do I want to use a decent brush? I'll use a decent brush. This is a number 16 Simmons, Simply Simmons. I think I got this at AC Moore or Michaels. And I'm getting it wet. Acrylic paint works best with water. I think. I like to use water. And um, I'm going to put a little bit of each color out on my palette. So this is the what she's calling um, canyon orange, but I only had pumpkin. Tangerine. Well, let me go back up so you can see what I'm doing. Tan Oops. And my lid comes off. See, I told you everything's old. Tangerine, and then I have burnt orange for the bottom. And the way these are cut, the wood pieces, um, the bottom is this flat part. So the, the stem kind of goes over to the side. So I'm going to keep the lightest area up there. Let's see. Let me see what her picture. No, she actually has it this way. She does have it so the light area is straight with the... Um, what is this called? The stem. So I'm going to go into the base color first, loading my brush. My brush is pretty loaded. And I'm just going to gently, don't worry about the stem because that's going to be green, but I'm going to cover the whole pumpkin again with this color. And I, I ran out actually. Huh. Was it pumpkin? Yeah. just want to get it wet everywhere because when we add the other colors that's the point you want it wet on wet so we're going to take just with this dirty brush the same brush maybe just blot it on my paper towel just kind of clean it a little bit I'm going to go into the lighter color load my brush and just put that across the top just kind of slip slap it and then blend it in so that it I think I want it a little lighter. Blend it in so that it fades out towards the middle. Whoops. You can always go back into your orange and so hopefully you can see that. It's very subtle and it should show up better when it's dry. And again, I'm just going to dry brush my on uh, wipe my brush on my paper towel and then I'm going into the dark 
what is it called? I'm using burnt orange. And I'm just going to start at the bottom and work my way toward the middle until it kind of fades out. And that's it. And you can always, like I said, add some more of the orange back in if it, if it got away from you. And I actually hit this edge here with some of the uh, dark but water takes it right off. So see, hopefully you can see a difference. And it should go from light to middle to dark. And then we're going to have to let that dry. And that's it, guys. That's the whole, that's the hardest part of the whole thing, doing that. But while it's drying, we can put in our stem. So let's see what she has us doing for the stem. says base the stems with foliage green and shade with avocado shade again with burnt umber so foliage green I only had medium foliage green so I didn't have foliage green so we're just going to wing it and use that and I'm going to use the same brush I, I just rinse it off in water and blot on my paper towel and you're just going to base this so you want it you want the stem to be or um brown now and I'm going to look at the pattern for a minute see how it's like wavy let's see I'll show you the um which one am I going to paint I'm going to do this one with the tree I like the purple base so see how it's wavy it shows you right here it's just like this wavy line so I'm just going to do that. I'm just going to wing it. I'm not going to trace it on. But you can absolutely trace that. And that's it. I don't... It does not need to be perfect. And then I'm going to take it uh, down the side too. Like over to the... Oops, and I keep touching it. So I'm painting the top and the sides and I'm just bringing the edge like that. Kind of matching up the edge. And make it as jagged as you want. It makes it it gives it more character, right? So we got to let that dry. I don't know why that looks like that. And let's see, what can we do in the meantime? Well, I'm just getting a little bit more regular orange on my brush because I want to get rid of that line. I just didn't like that right there for some reason. Okay, so we're going to set that aside to dry. And while it's drying, I'm going to have you decide, well, I already did all three, but decide which pumpkin you're going to do first and get some tracing paper. Now this is, I'm just going to move my paint so I don't stick everything in it. I have I don't know where it is at the moment. Oh. Sorry, I have I'll be right back. Alright, so the next thing I want to show is how you get you transfer this image onto your piece. But before I do that, I just want to say I did go back, I have three of these, so I did the other two. And as I was doing the other two, I realized that you don't need to bring the basic, like the middle color. Let me see if I can explain this to you. Um, so here's your middle value. You only need to get just put the middle value on there then you can take a little bit of your dark and start blending it out then you turn it this way put your middle value on there 
get a little bit of your lighter value and blend it out and then put the middle value in the middle like there's a couple ways you can do it don't get worked up over it and even if some of your light value gets on your dark and your dark gets on your light it still looks great like it e every single each of these looks different and it's just the background so don't worry about it all right I just because I just did two more and they eat both of them came out all different so see see what I'm saying like this one has a really liney look to it so I'm not particularly thrilled but we're gonna paint on top of it and the, the other thing I wanted to mention was this artist uh, Lori Speltz this is her design and I love this is what I used to love about decorative painting is that I didn't have to think about anything and they put it all out there for me they create this design and luckily they provide this for free for us so that you can practice and then you'll you'll want to paint more so what the next step in this type of painting is to trace so I have tracing paper and this is just a, I think I got this at AC Moore tracing paper it's transparent you know it's that tra it's like tissue paper almost and you're gonna take that you're also gonna need graphite paper and this is really used up and I just keep mine in this sleeve protector and they have uh, this I guess it's called white graphite and this is uh, gray graphite, but I have both because sometimes you have a dark background and you want the white, but uh, you're going to need the dark. And mine's really used up. And in this case, having a nice used up piece works because I don't want my lines to be really dark on the piece. And I'll show you that in a minute. But the first thing you want to do is just grab a pencil and you're going to trace the design onto your tracing paper. So basically I like to line it up at the bottom because this little pumpkin has a flat bottom and then I'll know how to line it up on the little pumpkin shape. So I'm just going to give a rough tracing now because I've already done it but I just wanted to show you that I'm going around the edge of it because I want to be able to line this up on my shape. and. I didn't actually do that when I did it when I traced it before and then you just trace now I when I trace my design on I do it in steps but for this part you want to trace all the details that you think you're gonna need I personally can wing a lot of stuff like I may wing the bats I may not even trace bats on and stars I can wing that um, but I do want to trace on my like I probably won't use these these shapes when I go to my piece I'll explain that in a minute but what I like to do is definitely have everything on this original tracing so that if you do need to have a reference of where to place something it's right there ready to go alright so see that now here's the little piece of ground so basically, you'll come away with the design on this piece of tracing paper. So then the next thing, when you, and I also always keep this available for a reference. So you have your color picture and your tracing right there so you can look at it for a reference. So the next thing I want to do is we're going to take and we're going to trace this onto here. Now I'm going to use uh, this one, which what it wasn't quite straight for some reason but it's pointing that way I want it this is the base I'm going to use the, the flat bottom which it's I don't know I don't like the way that's going I'm going to change that and that's the thing you can always change it don't feel like you're stuck if you don't like it change it so I don't like how this turned out so I'm going to Go back into the orange color and I'm going to change the angle on that and I'm going to bring it across. I know we decided to follow the pumpkin line, but I don't like that now. I've changed my mind, so I'm going to go this way more and bring it across the bottom. Can you see that? It's still dark over there, but maybe I'll just bring the dark all the way around. I don't want it to be dark over here as much.
Maybe I'll bring some of the light color down more too. And this wasn't wet. So now the wet on wet isn't exactly working. But I think I'm accomplishing what I wanted to do. I just wanted to make it well, not really. <laughs> this is still super dark. I think I did it that time. All right, we're going to leave it and stop being so specific. I'm going to take um, some more of the green, which is the avocado first. Since I have to wait for this to dry, because I was going to show you how to trace your pattern on, but I'm going to take the green and do another coat on my little uh, stem. Just get it so it's solid. And I think Lori is actually a wet on wet painter, which I was never a master of wet on wet. And that's Basically, um, a lot of acrylic painters do that because they've, they started with oils and that's how they get to blend everything. But then I like this. I like base coating, highlighting, and shading. That's just how I learned, but there's dry brushing and there's other techniques that you get the same result as you do with wet on wet. All right, so now that looks good. So why don't we just take one of these other ones that are, if it's dry, the same as dry. And I'm going to trace one of these, I think the witch. i put it up a little bit. Alright, so the first thing you want to do is position the design. So let's go down. And this is going to be ground under her feet. I want both of these to fit the pumpkins. So that's why I've moved it up. I don't know why it's not fitting as well. But anyway, we're going to do it. This is how I'm going to do it. I might hang them off a little bit. So I'm going with this bottom. You place it where you want it to be. Then you stick your graphite under there. And I like to use a stylus. Sometimes, sometimes you can actually tape it down. You tape your tracing down so, you, so it doesn't move on you. And you won't have to fudge around with it after that. But basically you get your graphite under there and you hold it in place. And then you gently, don't press too hard because you don't want to gouge the wood with the stylus. You go around the design and this will transfer the image onto the wood. And if you mess up or if there's a line that you don't like, it, it does a race. So don't panic and just gently continue. When I get the witch done, I'll stop and go off camera and finish the rest. And what's great about this pattern actually is it's just a silhouette. It's like the pumpkin's been carved into this shape, and it's so cute. I just thought it was really cute and easy for you guys. I'm, I might be making it more difficult <laughs> with my flubs today. I feel like I'm flubbing a little bit. But it's fun. I'm having fun. I like this. The, the part I love the best about painting are the details. I don't like the prep and the sanding. Like once you get it to this point, this is where I'm excited. So see now, there's my witch. Can you see her? So you're going to do that. Um, like I said, I may just, I'm going to trace my pumpkins on there, definitely. These two guys. And I'll probably trace my bats. So I'm going to go off camera and get that all on here. And then I have to come and put my, I'm going to put my stems on all three and I'll be back. All right, so you go ahead and do that. So I just wanted to tell you, so this is a good way to show you, if you forgot something, 
if you left out a whole thing. Sometimes you'll go around a tracing and you thought you did and you didn't do it. You just come back and you line it up. You can see through the tracing paper so that you can line up what you've already done and put her right back where she was. That's why it's also good to have it taped down so that you can just go like this and check what you've done and what you haven't done. So you get it lined up and then you can put on what you forgot. And so I'm going to just stick this back under and I'm going to add my pumpkins. All right, but I just wanted to share that. Don't, you know, don't panic. It's okay. Um, and I'll be right back. 